Right, hi everyone. My name's Carl, Carl Lehman from Dream It, Planet, Live It, and welcome to the series that we've uh, very aptly titled Coffee with Carl, because I'm poised here with a coffee. So is Rob. Say hi, say hi, Rob. Hello, everyone. Hey, Carl. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're more than welcome. <laughs> so joining us on the, uh, the web call today is Rob Austin from Commission with Permission. Now, anybody who's been following this series of uh, little videos that we've been doing is I've been talking to um, inspirational people, uh, people who are at the top of their games in terms of what they do. So last week we had Steve Judge, who's a two times world champion triathlete, an amazing story there. But we've had lots of different people on the call as well. We've had uh, people who are doing special things, adapting their business in light of COVID and, and things along those lines. So Natalie Cash did something very, very special there. Um, and then we've had like property experts like Ed AK, um, an international speaker and three times best-selling author, Charlie Hutton. Now, it's fair to say, Rob, that mm -hmm. these people I've interviewed so far are probably 20, possibly even 30 years older <laughs> than your good self. But just by way of an introduction, can you give us a little bit of a potted history about <clears> yourself <throat> and just in terms of setting this uh, setting this call up? Absolutely, yeah, because again, thanks for having me. I'm welcome to the boardroom, the sales boardroom. I'm still <laughs> coming up with names, so any of the comments, any names is, is, would be appreciated. Yeah, so obviously I've not been in the game probably as long as, as the previous guests and a great series, by the way. Um, I started off my career a bit differently. I started off in um, retail, so a shop in Paynton, of all places, many, many years ago, as it feels now. Um, worked my way up, but then kind of had my eyes on Torbay, Torquay more so, because that's where I kind of wanted to live at the time. So I moved over to Torquay and did the nitty gritty. What else do you do in Torbay, really, apart from hospitality? <laughs> so I went straight into, <laughs> straight into the deep end and the hospitality, jumped in, completely out of my comfort zone, um, and did waiting and was working 80 90 hours a week sometimes it was cr in the summer absolutely crazy good fun made some made some good friends made some amazing people we people from all walks of life but i was doing doing too much and um but then i found another another role in management within a restaurant up, up up the road um again the theme was just kind of working my way up and going up the ladder and becoming into management i really enjoyed it and and liked the the authority and the and the looking after the staff and that kind of thing then moved on again. I always kept on wanting to move up, if that makes sense. I think we all do, obviously, and um, became a concierge of a retirement village and enjoyed that for a couple of years. But then I think the hospitality was starting to really get a bit too much working every Christmas, every bank holiday, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. 12 hours a day sometimes. I've done every type of shift. It made me the kind of character I am today, I think. Um, so I had a look around again and then I found a boutique, beautiful hotel in Torquay um, and managed the reception there for four years. Um, that really kind of obviously the topic for today, which is the sales, gave me the first element towards that, the upselling, the the dealing with people and the luxury kind of boutiqueness of that. And um, yeah, but again, <laughs> um, going down to working every Christmas, got got, got fed up really, Carl, and um, had to do something different. Um, but I'm hopeless at being an engineer. There was no idea where to start or anything like that. So I had to do something that was familiar and similar. And I had miles on Exeter where business was. Um, and find a call center completely different never done anything like it in my life but I thought you know what let's just do it two hour commute every day <laughs> not much better wage or anything like that it was just something different trying to trying to see what else to, to do out there to get out the hospitality game so was this I, a customer services call center or was it an outgoing outgoing uh, sales call center yeah it was cold calling it was telemarketing right. whatever you think of that you know you know the stigma around telemarketing but I, yeah, the first week, I hated it. Absolutely hated it. It was yeah, completely yeah. different. The commute, the drive to Exeter every single day. Um, absolutely hated it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, but after a couple of weeks, I started to meet some good people there. Um, I started getting a few wins, uh, a few leads on the board for, for some big companies. And started to fall in love with it. Really did. Absolutely did. And um, the commute was, was starting to feel worth it. The leads were coming in. Right. And um, yeah, just worked hard. And within three months, I was top salesperson within in what I, in my field wow. uh, well, while you. working there. So I was quite proud of that <laughs> uh, and stuck it out. And two years later, two to three years later, I can't remember now. Um, I kind of, again, I, got, I just wanted to work my way up. I just didn't know what to do. And I was quite fed up interrupting people's days every single day. 
uh, through the cold call. I mean, I was lucky. I was lucky to work with the likes of Barclay Card and Eon and, and Funding Circle and lots of big organizations. But I just always felt there could be a better way. And um, what else was there? Mm. Do it myself. So that's where I am now. So how did you, I mean, your business is called Commission with Permission, right? That's right. <laughs> t- t- tell yeah. us a little bit more about that. So when I started off, I um, came across a online course, as we most of us maybe have done or some reason, you know, quite a bit of money. It was an investment and it was in Canada. It was called um, How to Become a Better Closer, High Ticket Closing, that kind of thing. I thought that sounds really interesting. But the main concept was, was the high ticket, which is big value deals. So not having to do so many with the cold calling, you have to hundreds and hundreds of calls, which was just sometimes a bit too much. But the high ticket meant one off deals, higher value kind of things. Okay. So the course was at 2 a.m. in the morning because of the time difference, eight hours at night. And I was still going to work in extra at the time. It was a bit of a, (laughs) it was a bit, bit of a nightmare, but it was good fun. Um, Still getting leads on the board, which was good. Um, Even though I was quite tired. But so I had my eyes on bigger, bigger value deals. So commission with permission. So working on a results basis only at the time um, in the closing element. So that was kind of hopefully answers, answer that question. So your ideal clients, what, 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 do, what do they look like? Who, who do you work with, Rob? Oh, well, it's a good question. Um, so basically I've, changed my structure so not only can i help businesses secure more closing opportunities and get more sales across the line i'm actually looking into teaching and found a consultancy in plymouth that i'm helping with their sales side so they were an outsourced financial directors i'm doing their sales consultancy so i'm helping their clients achieve more sales uh through my sales days in this room (laughs) (laughs) um so the ideal client really carver is professional based services really people who have a great message a great story a great service but unfortunately, sales has to be done, whether we all like it or not. We, ha- If you're wanting customers to buy your service or product, you're talking to customers, you're, you're in sales. That is sales. So someone who has a great product, but isn't naturally a salesperson or just wants to improve, wants to get more sales across the line. I'm sure we all would, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it's a curious one, this is, isn't it? I think because um, in, in the UK, probably sales is a dirty word uh, or the perception is that it's a dirty word. Whereas, you know, in the United States for America, you know, very different attitudes, isn't it, towards being a salesperson. Um, yeah. I've got a question for you. So yep. what's the oldest profession in the world? The oldest profession? Yeah, yeah. Probably sales, I would imagine. Sales. Some sort of yeah. sales, but yeah. Most people will Absolutely. say prostitution. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's some that, sales. That's there's a sale. Sales, right? It is. You're, yeah. you're selling something, aren't you? So when people say, yeah. "I don't believe in sales," well, nothing happens unless something happens, right? So oh. unless uh, you know a sale is made, there's no widgets that are manufactured, there's no service that's provided. So arguably, sales is probably one of the most important aspects of any business, if not the most important aspects of any business. In my humble opinion, issues, is, yeah. Go on, sorry, Rob. I was going to say, for me, it's the lifeblood. I mean, what happens when no sales are done? Who's paying right. the bills? Who's paying? Who, how the family surviving? Who, how's the company going? How's the customers being served without sales? It truly is the lifeblood. Exactly right. Yeah, Ex- expand on that. So when you say lifeblood, go on. What, what, what do you mean by that exactly? Well, in my opinion, I mean, as I said, if, if sales aren't being closed, if sales aren't being maintained, if sales aren't being chased up, if sales aren't being followed up, who's paying the bills? Who's paying for the, the fancy office? Who's paying the, the, the staff salaries? Who's paying for the marketing? Who's paying for the anything yeah, yeah. Is, is done for a sale? Yeah, yeah. And let's explore, you know, the 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 old method of sales versus your, I'll say your new method. I'm not saying it's necessarily <laughs> you per se, because my perception of you, having known you in the time that I've known you, is that, you know, to address any viewers watching this, when you talk about a salesperson, I think it's probably fair to say that most of us conjure up that double glazing salesperson who you know camps themselves down in your home until you sign on the dotted line and they and they won't leave your house and, until they do so or yeah. it's the used car salesperson who wears white socks and sort of you know just you know makes you cringe and, and it's important to you know explain that what we're talking about is not that type of sale so yeah. you know, in your own words describe you know what what it is you do because you've got an interesting ethos regarding sales 
Yeah, I suppose to expand on what you said, I always ask this question. I mean, what, what typically comes to mind when you think of a salesperson? I mean, I think I, I don't even know the figures, but I would just, I'd imagine 90% of us have been told it one way or another from when we were growing up to now, not to trust salespeople, not to, um, the limiting buying beliefs that we have, it all comes from when we we're younger, you know, so that's kind of exactly right. The, the pushy, I don't want to say in the industry, <laughs> in case I, you know, say anyone in particular, but sales has, has had that stigma which I agree needs to be changed. There's nothing wrong with selling. It's, it's the, the foundation is communication. It's, it's persuasion, it's influence. I don't, I don't mean to become manipulative. I mean, in an ethical and non-pushy way to convince someone who has the need for your product, service, has the budget, but it yeah. is your duty to close them, if that makes sense. It's a yeah. terrible thing if they go buy somewhere else, you know, what they should have bought from you. Yeah. So. It's having those ethics, it's having those skills, because a lot of people don't, don't expand on this. And, and I've heard, obviously, sales having the, the low barrier of entry that it does. Oh, I can pick up the phone, I can talk to people, I can do sales. Well, lots of people study lots of different things. And quite recently, I've tried to update my LinkedIn, and um, there's no option for sales professional. There's no option for sales consultant. There's nothing. There's no, I don't understand it. When we agreed earlier, Carl, that the sales is the lifeblood of the business. Yeah. And there's no option to choose a salesperson as profession. But why? Is it down to the stigma? What, what, what is it? We are all salespeople in our own role. It, and what, again, another thing for me as well is I saw a job advertised recently. I can't remember what corporation it was. They said sales and marketing manager. Okay. But for me, there's two separate, completely yeah. different things. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. I know what I do, which is sales. I teach sales, I, I conduct sales, I've been in sales. That's all I do. I don't do marketing. I've got good friends who do, partner up with. Branding, we've got good friends that do that. Sure. Copywriting, it's all part of the sales funnel, but it's separate to what I do. My skill and focus is in sales, the communication, the influence, the questions, the tonalities, um, where marketing is completely different. So that really bothers me when I see that because they're two separate departments. Would you agree? Because I do. I'm trying to yeah I, I guess there's parallels that can be drawn here i mean you know i work in you know financial services so i call myself um a, a real financial planner as opposed to um a, a financial advertiser which you know most ifas out there i still believe having been in the business for 35 years still focus on the wrong thing they mm. focus on selling products and, and this is quite contentious i know because obviously we're talking about sales however you know when you talk about sales I think you can redefine the word sell into a number of different things because I find from my experience of dealing with clients over the last 35 years, as I say, is that some people need to be inspired, some people need to be motivated, some people need to be cajoled, you know, yeah. um, in order to take action for their own benefit, yeah, or the benefit of their family. And I guess that's kind of part of sales, isn't it, really? But yeah. I guess it depends where your heart is on this, you know, and if the focus is on you and it's a transaction for you to kind of earn money, then that's perhaps where, you know, there's a, there's a, a an ethics issue. But when, when, when you, your focus is on the other person, because you believe passionately without any shadow of a doubt in your mind that actually, you know, the service that you're providing or the product that you're Spot. providing is going to enhance their life or whatever it may be. Value. Yeah. That's a different conversation altogether, isn't it? Massively, totally agree, um, Kai. I think it's all question of value. I'm not condoning any old school sales techniques that push and push and push. I'm talking about the sales have changed. I mean, now that the internet exists, well, 20 years, I'd imagine, sales have changed. People have more options to explore, mm. reviews, different options, saturated markets. They've got all options. So before, like you said, the first profession, people would go to that salesperson like they were a god. <laughs> they had all the information and they could hold it to them. But now people are cleverer. They can go to all these different elements, different sites, reviews, word of mouth. Obviously, get, those people get business on word of mouth. And it's that perception that you carry. And you're right. So it is your duty. If you Again, and I've got criteria around if the sale is right for someone. But if you've got that true mindset that you're going to help someone, you're going to change someone's life. It, it comes out in your voice, in your conviction, the way you talk to them, the way you sound. People hear it. People are clever. Even if they can't see you, they they can they're picturing you on that phone. They can they know what you look like depending on your voice. Tell me more so about you, that. 
So what I mean is, is the voice patterns, the tonalities, the way you talk. If you're not, if you're not ethical in your voice, they know it. They smell it. They hear it. They know it. Right. And I've experienced it. I've worked with people, not to name any names. I've I've seen the wrong way of sales. Yeah. That way, that much is true. I'm not saying I'm an expert in terms of. I'm always learning. I'm a very open person. I'm always, always, always learning. But I know what I do. I know what my focus is, which is sales. So, what I mean is when you're on that phone, they're building up that mental picture because people want to, they want to buy from people like you. They want to, they want to associate with people who are like them. If that makes sense. They, they want to, they buy based on commonality. They don't buy on differences. If it was something that didn't impact their life, they're not going to buy if they don't like you either. So it's all about that voice, that power, that conviction, not to digress, but going back to the beginning of the mindset you have that you can benefit people's lives. It comes out in your voice hundred percent. Absolutely. And it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because I've got your little crib sheet here and you say people don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. So yeah. t- talk us through that thinking. Because that's so, a cultural aspect to the call center. You know, we've all been there. We've received unsolicited calls. People are trying to, you know, ply their vile trades and, 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 and sell you stuff. I mean, that is a, a completely different philosophy. You know, people don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. So, yeah, let's unpack that. It's, it's part of one of my consulting days is really the why you do what you do. I think we, we covered this on one of our meetings before, Carl, the, the golden circle of Simon Sinek, the why you do what you do. Yes. Great, great piece of advice. I mean, I went through down days, really did. I, I mean, I started my business over a year ago and the first three months was, was really hard. I had no help, um, but I had to keep going. So I had that purpose, that why it kept me going, the burning desire. I've heard you mention a lot in your, in the videos in the past. And um, it was hard, really hard. So having that why, that, that clarity, this is what I teach, clarity and confidence and take yourself seriously in your strategy because you understand your story. So you understand your sales story and your message. So a lot of people don't, they think they do, but could it, could we be deep? Could we go deeper? So I implore everyone to, to discover your why. And when I hear what does start with your why, what does that mean? I, I wanted the structure. I wanted a way of describing that. So things like, why do I do what I do? What is my purpose? What is my cause? What is my belief? And why does my organization exist? And that essentially is the, your mission statement, whatever it might be called, as we've all had different terminology in the past, but it really goes deeper to why you do what you do. And that's sales in, in, in a nutshell, because you're asking questions to ask your clients why. Why do they want to buy? Why are they here? Why, do you, why have you done business with me? It never stops for after the sale. It's, it's a continuous thing. Yeah. Um, so the power of why it is, it's, it's the foundations of why we do what we do. Why do we get up and bed in the, get out of bed in the morning? You know, why do, as entrepreneurs or, or self-employed people, why do we get out of bed in the morning? You know, ask yourself that question. You see, when you, when you talk about why there, I, I'm hearing it's about understanding. So, you know, if I've got somebody sat on my consulting couch here that you can just see off screen, you know, when, when I, if it's a new prospective client, I'll say, so why, why are you here today? And, yeah. you know, they might look at me like I've gone mad or something or other. And they go, well, you know, I've got this pension, you know, it needs reviewing, blah, 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 blah. Okay, fine. Tell me about that. And, oh, well, I've got this pension. Right, I pay, yeah. you know, £500 a month into it. And I go, well, and I'm, I'll say, so why are you paying £500 a month? And they'll go, are you, are you mad? I'm kind of saving for my retirement. I said, no, you're missing the real question I'm asking you here. Is yeah, yeah. Why specifically mm-hmm. are you paying £500 a month? Specifically is a good word. Yeah. And, and they don't know. And this is what I talk about. And it's interesting. I've jotted down a few words here, you know, clarity and confidence. I talk to people <clears> about getting crystal clear clarity yes. about what it is that they want. And, you know, it's about understanding. So interestingly, I mean, as you were talking now, I was thinking about sales. And I remember somebody saying to me once, you've got two ears and one mouth. Yeah. And therefore, you should use it in that proportion. So actually, are we saying that sales is actually more about understanding what an, you know, a potential person's problem is rather than you, as I say, applying your will on them and your, your vile trade on them? Spot on. I think it's about understanding the motivation and understanding the why. And, the, and, and, and that's when you'll get a, a raving fan and not just someone who's been pushed into it. 
create an army of raving fans, as I always say. <laughs> I love that phrase. Yeah. That's brilliant. It's it's true. It's true. I mean, how have you ever bought something, Carl, and then wanted to go and tell all your friends about it? Yeah. We've all done it. Yeah, yeah. Why? Because we felt understood. Yeah. We felt our motivation was understood. The whole concept we felt understood. They were like us. We they understood us. They put us back in control. Because a lot of people, when you have concepts and structure around something, again, I always ask this question as well, and I heard it from Jordan Belfort, massive, obviously biggest sales guru in the world. Um, he says, close your eyes and picture a restaurant. And he says, bring your wife with you or whoever it may be, your husband, whatever, whoever it is, a best friend. Yeah. Candlelit, drinks, wherever you want to be in the world, the best cuisine, the smell, smell it all. And he said, now everyone open their eyes. And he said, I bet who in the room thought of McDonald's? Well, obviously no one. <laughs> so if you did, I'd be a bit worried. But there's a reason why I'm saying, Carl, because McDonald's is the most successful restaurant, as we all know. It is a restaurant in history. Yeah. It never will be. Even if it was closed for three months, I bet it's still, it will make its way, it will make it back up. Um, and what I mean is, is because it has a structure. It's a simple, easy, concise, clear strategy that even a 16 year old or anyone could go in and manage it. No problem. It works. Yeah. It goes really well. So, what I'm trying to say is, having a structure and that's what I do. I give business owners back a structure, sales strategy that's clear and concise that can work within your business and give you that clarity. And like you do in your, we all, I think we all do clarity as long as we're clear on our own, but how can I be teaching clarity if I'm not clear on myself? That's kind of what I'm trying to say. Oh, for sure. You've got to be authentic, 100% authentic in terms of what you do. Um, you, you talk about structure there, and one of my favourite phrases that, you, if you watch the videos back, you'll probably hear it. I, I, I'm sure I've said it a number of times already. But most people aim at nothing and hit it with tremendous accuracy. Yeah, yeah? And, and and it's because they don't have a structure or they don't have a plan or a path that they can follow. And mm. really, you know, what we're talking about here is, I mean, where I'm going with this is there's a number of businesses. Let's be pragmatic about it. There's a number of businesses uh, over the past couple of months or so that have really really struggled yeah yeah so they are struggling to survive and therefore we need to move these people in that survival state to come over a point where they can actually thrive so that being the case you know what are the top tips that you know you can give them what are the strategies you know they can deploy you know as you see it you know how can you help how can you help these businesses I, I suppose the main question to understand is what, what, why, why is the, why have they given up? Right. I mean, again, this comes down to the clarity of what you do for your customers. If you've got a great product, a great service that really solves a real world problem, let's go back to the basics. Why do you do what you do? Yeah. Well, uh, uh, okay. Let's look at a concise way of, I like to call it the power statement. Um, I'm trying to think of something relevant financial service why do people come to you Carl? what what do people come to you i'm sure you do i think anybody in this whatever would know their why would be yourself i mean what would who would typically come to you for the service you offer i, I guess people come to us because we are not your typical financial advisor or financial advertisers i call them so they tend to be owner managed business owners company directors they're very often busy 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 uh, running their businesses, but they don't have the time to learn everything else like this. And, you know, the, I guess the, what they say to us in a number of different ways is, you know, they don't have a plan, they don't have a path. And actually what we do is help them construct a, a life plan that helps them, you know, work out, first of all, what they, what they want from their life first and foremost. And yeah. then the money is just an energy that facilitates that. Yeah. So I guess people that come to us are the people that, you know, want to get some clarity about their life and then some clarity about their money so they can do all the stuff that they want to do without fear of running out of it. And that is an outcome, isn't it? Right. So, so what I'm trying to say is, what is your outcome? And then my outcome, I'm clear, is confidence, yeah. clarity, because that's what I've heard mostly. That's, I kind of knew that already, but from the clients I've had, that's all they've said. Rob, I'm so clear. I've had the best sales month I've ever had because I'm a lot clearer on my message. So why are they failing? I, I really want to understand how it's happening. If you really know your business, you've got a great offer. I know it's been unprecedented times, but I will say I've never been busier and I've not been business that long. Oh, same here. 
Same here. And I mean, March, we had our second best month in business in 35 years, which is just absolutely bonkers. Who would have thought it? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so the question is, I don't know. I mean, why are we here? What, what's happened? Um, I, I, I made an article a few months ago about the um, not burying your head in the sand and really get out there, advertise. Okay, furlough staff, but have somebody at least putting messages on LinkedIn, having Facebook social posts still happening. Your name is still out there. People will remember it. Give value. Give away some free books, some free video, some content, some something. Just, just something. I know it's easy said than done, but it is actually quite easy. We live in a world of golden age of technology. We can do anything we want. Um, we can speak to people in the US. We can wherever we want, you know. And and nothing's going to go back to normal. I'm sure you'd agree, Carl. I'm, I'm, I'm for one. <laughs> I love technology. I've always have done. I know our meetings will never go back to normal. I don't miss driving around the whole of <laughs> Devon having class. I don't miss it at all. Yeah. I don't miss it, yeah. miss getting stuck on the motorway, trying to get home at night and an extra now and now. I don't miss it. Yeah. So are you embracing technology? And it's not it's not expensive. So I mean, has, what's, what's a Zoom descript, subscription? Eleven pounds a month? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, has has that sort of technology changed the way that sales is done though? No. I wish I took shares in Zoom <laughs> before it came on. I wish I did or something, you know. Um, in my opinion, no, because I've had people reach out to me in London, individual business owners, digital marketing agencies, that kind of thing. They've spent sales days with me. How could I have done that without driving all the way there and putting that cost on top of them and, and all these things? It was simple. It was done. We sat here for the whole day and did a sales day. I agree with you. So, so convenient. The, the opportunities are, are endless. I mean, we, we, we've used Zoom for probably about seven years in, in, in my business, you know, primarily for a team communication thing because i got um, members of the team literally all around the country. All over, right. yeah. Um, so we, we, we're very comfortable with it. But now, you know, I guess some of the barriers in the past were referrals coming through to other parts of the country. They don't exist anymore. I mean, we've picked up um, three or four new clients in London Right. Um, so easy to do it like this. Um, I've got one in Scotland. Um, I've got another one um, actually sort of in Hong Kong, who's, who's living in Hong Kong at the moment, um, UK res, but um, actually sort of we can jump on a call like this and you know, away you go. You're away at the races. So how can people, you know, leverage, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking we're, we're, the lockdown is now easing. Yeah. Businesses are gently starting to go back to their their normal sort of work and and for a lot of service businesses we can still carry on as normal i mean we, we've been open every single you know business day you know since since covid began you know we've yeah. never shut we haven't furloughed any staff you know we've just we've been busier than ever yeah so i think there's always winners and losers in any market conditions aren't there Ab absolutely yeah so I, i'm just curious in terms of you know what you do and how you do it <clears throat> Who are the people that should be reaching out to you, Rob, and saying, actually, yeah. well, first of all, let's be clear. What, what, what do you offer? Do you offer like sales training or do you do the actual calls? Tell us all about that. So, <clears throat> so, I'm, always, so I'm always defining my offer. And as I said, recently, mainly is the consultancy. So the sales coaching, in, as I said, in, in, in the room behind me. Um, it really is. That's, my, that's where the heart is. I, I really get a kick out of helping business owners go through go for their sales strategy in their story and, be, and and make them become the best salesperson of their business even if they haven't got a sale if they've got a sales team great fine whatever that of course maybe spend some time with them um but i think the business owner does have to be their top salesperson i think they because they, they, they've got to know their story yeah. and marketing needs to know the story sales needs to know the story it, it, it's the foundation of having a successful sales venture which is again that pays the bills like we mentioned earlier um so my main offer would be the consultancy yep. so spending about six or seven hours in 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 the room and obviously having a break in between going through that um two to three days over a month or two months whatever it may be um to really get to the nitty-gritty we'll also go through the mechanics of closing so how to i've got a nine-step process of how to close the deal um again for me you hear sales gurus sales mentors there's 101 ways to close the deal and 200 ways to say this question but it's like you don't need 200 ways you don't need 101 different ways you just need a clear way that works for you and that's what i do and that's what i build as an individual a bit of a script a bit of a structure 
Um, obviously, you don't want to sound scripted. That's not what I mean. But it's having something to follow, some guidelines. Yeah. So from rapport, do people skip rapport? I've, I, I've, the amount of conversation I've had, they, they sound they just don't care about you. But rapport should never be skipped because if rapport instantly basically means that the bare minimum is they like you and they want to buy from people like you. If you skip that, they're not going to buy. So secondly would be take yourself seriously, set an agenda, set a tone for this meeting. Um, and what I mean by that is having just something like, Carl, this is how the call is going to go. I'm just going to ask some few questions just to see if we're fit for each other. How does that sound? That's a very small one. That's one example. But is that fair enough? You're setting the tone. You're in control of that conversation. You're so good at this, obviously, with these <laughs> interviews. And I'm not normally ever talking this much. So it goes back to the two ears, one mouth. I love being asked questions sometimes because that's all I do. And that's what sales is. It's asking the right questions with the right voice. Yeah the right ethics, the right mindset. And this is why there's so much more to sales car. I, I, when you hear that concept of sales is pushing all this, it, it does annoy me because there's a lot more to it. Yeah. It's communication. It's how to talk to people, have a proper discussion about something. Um, does that make sense? Uh, absolutely. And, you know, it's, it's something that I hear all the time, you know, like, like I said earlier, when I meet new people, I say, why are we sat here? And very often, you know, they'll say, oh, I, I saw this IFA, you know, um, I couldn't actually see him because the, the office was full of cigarette smoke. You know, I had to, nothing against anyone that's smoking here, but, you know, it just seemed very 1980s, you know, to me sort of thing. Or, you know, I saw this person and all they wanted to do was flog me a policy uh, or, or all they wanted to do was about, you know, sort of this fund and that fund and all the rest of it. And I'll say, so why are you sat here? And they go, oh, well, we here, you know, you've got a real good focus about me as in, you know, my story. I was going to mention that, yeah. I guess, you know, it's one of those things that I'm just, it's the way I'm wired. You know, I almost quit the financial planning business years and years ago just because I was so disillusioned with the way that the financial it, services business, I think this is a great example, actually, about how that's, sales that's a sales story. It's a sales because story, yeah. You've got big companies who are up here manufacturing products that then go out to the independent financial advice community and say, hey, guys, here's the latest, new, shiniest product. Go and sell that to your clients. And do you know what? They do. I did. Don't worry, I'm yeah. a reformed character. But you know, that's exactly <laughs> what I did. You know, I used to go, oh, this is the latest, new, shiniest pension. This must be the best mm -hmm. thing for my client. We're the best one mm -hmm. in the world. And it's only because my wife, Sarah, you know, clinical psychologist by background, you know, I was sat on the sofa one evening and I said, you know what? I'm going to quit financial services. And she goes, why? I said, I'm making an impact on people's lives. But, but not really making an impact on people's lives or giving them a few quid, but it's not getting to the heart of the matter. So yeah, here we go. Then she goes, so what is the heart of the matter? And then yeah, she starts <laughs> questions. All this stuff with me. Questions, exactly. Questions are the answers. Um, and, you know, what we found was that actually, you know, for me, it's about I'm just a, a person who's naturally fascinated by people and their story, and I want to empower them to live the best lives that they can be and of course, if we can facilitate that without them having any financial worries, then that, that's part of my why, really. And that's, yeah. the people that sit here are usually sitting here because they've been sold a product. And, you know, there's one guy who's just been referred to me. And I said, so why are we having this conversation? He said, because every time I see my financial advisor, he sells me a product mm. or tries to sell me a product. So I'm getting to the nub of like ethical sales here now, because for me, you know, that may or may not be appropriate for that person. I don't know. I don't know him well enough yet to be able to comment on that. But the fact that, the, you know, the client said to me, every time I see this person, he is selling me stuff. Yeah. And I'm going, well, let's just talk about that because I'm not going to talk to you about products. I mean, in, in the book, as you know, here we go. We've got one, Dream It, Planet, Live It. It's all about you. Yeah. You know, what makes you tick? What's important to you? What keeps you awake at night? What are your hopes? What are your dreams? What do you want to do? What, 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 what legacy do you want to leave your family? If you, if you had to put a title on that, what would you call it, Carl? In terms of, because what I'm trying to say is, and I read a book recently um, called Gap Selling. I don't know if you've ever heard of it by Keenan. Amazing book. And it, the message is people don't care about you. They, they, they don't. Unfortunately, it's the harsh truth about sales. They yeah. don't care about you. They don't care about your company. Yep. They don't care about what you do. Yep. They care about their challenges they want to solve. Yep. So if you've got that solution, great, let's come to that. Um, but what would you say of your questions that you ask? What are you trying to do? 
And in my opinion, it's diagnosing. So you haven't got a problem in sales, yeah, yeah. but you've got a massive issue in diagnosing. Yeah. And again, we do that by questions. Yeah, so it's yeah, diagnosing, yeah. diagnosing the pain, obviously. No pain, yeah, yeah. no sell. And if people feel heard, I guess when you then dispense your prescription or your, your, you know, your intervention, yeah. whatever it is, yeah, that's if you, they've been heard and you've done a thorough diagnosis, you know, they're more likely to take the pill, right? Absolutely. Well, yeah, when you put it that way, yeah. Um, but it's basically have that doctor's approach, have that mentality that you've got the cure. But again, take your product seriously. You haven't got to, you've got to bow to everyone. Not everyone's going to be your customer. Not everyone's going to buy. Oh, for sure. Because you want to be speaking to the right people. This is what it comes to. And again, part of my consultancy is we'll define the niche. We'll go into your proper target market properly. Because um, you might think your target market what it is, but it might not necessarily be. Can we be more specific? And that comes down to the why and how we can explore that. Um, but again, if you're, if you're trying to sell to 10 people and those 10 people are never going to buy from you, you're going to start thinking, I feel a bit, I feel a bit crap. Yeah. <laughs> I feel crap. I'm not, I'm no good at it. I'm no good at sell. No, because they were never going to buy. So that, can we be specific? Can we, that's all part of the sales story and the niche. And a lot of people say, I don't need a niche. Everyone's my client. When you get that big, maybe, but mm -hmm. I think when you start off, even middle going on, define that target market and come to that niche. It's Which, an interesting one, that, and, and, and I guess it's understanding where, where you fit. And you know, as you know, you know, I get invited out to speak at different events and, and so forth. Mm. And I, I did one down here in Devon, and uh, I came off stage, and uh, anyway, one guy came up to me and said, um, he said, interesting talk, Carl. He said, but do you realise you've just – ostracized about 80 percent of the audience yeah. i said hell yes so what? yeah perfect he said oh wow he said did you do that deliberately i said yeah because everybody everybody put their hand up in this room so i want to deal with carl lane and i said i can't handle that i said well what i'm looking for are a certain type of person people who are open-minded <laughs> willing to take advice they're focused they're driven and and they they kind of get me i said if everybody came running through the door i said we, <laughs> we couldn't we couldn't cope yeah. And he said, oh, I thought you were just like being, you know, whatever. And I said, no, no, no. I said, there's a science behind it. I know where, you know, we can add value to people. Uh, I know my strengths and I know my weaknesses. And, you know, at the end of the day, we just focus on our strengths, don't we? I mean, you've done with, that with, with, with yourselves, understanding exactly who you are. Well, I think like I mentioned before, I'm, not, I'm no marketer. I'm no brand development. I'm a salesperson. But where, where did you get these ethics from, though, Carl? Because obviously it's very similar to what I do and what I teach and what I, what I look to do in Again, all I do is sales. I'm a sales athlete. I think I mentioned this before. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, you, tennis player goes to Wimbledon. Do you think that they don't spend thousands of hours training for it? Of course they do. Of course they do. I'm exactly the same as sales. That's how I treat it. It's an art form. It's it's a profession. It's sales. Where did you get? Where did you get out of curiosity your kind of ethics and knowledge of sales? Because it, it is what you do. You are a salesperson for your own business, aren't you? Absolutely. And uh, I guess you know it, it comes back from sort of my history, really. I guess you know I had parents. Dad was you know, born in Germany. He caught the tail end of the Second World War. Um, you know, got captured as a prisoner of war, and ultimately wow. ended up, you know, here in England. In fact, you know, he's quite a smart guy because he decided not to go back to Germany at the end of the war, which is a jolly good job he didn't, because all of the guys who did were taken off by the Russians and shot in a local forest. So, uh, I guess Dad's right. history was one of being resourcefulness. So he started out mm. working on the farm, then you know, he started selling eggs. Then he started, you know, selling sort of milk and then he, you know, became a clean, easy salesman. Then he was a sales manager. Then, a, then he set up three new businesses of his own. And I guess I've just been brought up with that kind of mentality. But all the time, mum and dad's moral compass was always pointed in the right direction. And I think, you know, I always say this phrase, children learn what they live. Yeah. Children learn what they live. So, you know, the fact that, you know, mum and dad had this kind of real kind of clear idea about what was right, what was wrong. And, you know, yes, you need to be hardworking, focused and driven. Oh, interestingly, that's my ideal client there, isn't it? Just having said that, you know, it's one of those things that it, it's about who you are. Those are your values. And I, I talk about this in the book, actually. And you and I have spoken about this, haven't we, in the past. Your values are who you are. They're, they're, they're not going to change. Beliefs, you can shape your beliefs, but your values are, are much more kind of ingrained in who you are. So I guess... You know, if somebody's in sales and they're doing it for their own ends and, you know, absolutely that's their one and only focus themselves, they're probably not going to succeed. 
But if you help people in life along their journey and you help them do whatever they want to do, the bigger picture, like you, you understand the person's why that help, helps you then to, you know, find the product or the solution that they need. And it's a win-win situation then, isn't it? It's not a win-lose. <clears throat> it really boils down to having that confidence and the clarity on your stale story. It always does. There's foundations. I mean, you don't build a skyscraper without starting the book. You don't start from the top. <laughs> you always start from the book. So you build up, you build up, you build up, you build up. And it's having that confidence and clarity. So what I mean is, is for me, it, it's not always easy to be top of your game. We all get bad days. Yeah. I get them all the time. And if they get those days, we don't know why I have this luxury, but I put the phone down. I can't, I can't. I've got to go off and I'll do something. But I mean, for me, it's strategies and mindset challenges. I do lots of mindset things. I do, do you have anything like that, Carl? Do you have to stay? Because how do you stay top of your game? Do, do, you, do you acknowledge that? Do you have anything quite like that? Because I find meditation really helps. 10 minutes in the morning. Just have a bit of, just a bit my time. I don't go on my phone. I don't look at it. About half an hour. I spend, that time is crucial for me to set my day up. So I don't go on my phone. I don't even look at it. Don't go on the news. I don't look at my notifications because you turn into reactive mode yeah. and the whole day subconsciously, you don't even know you're doing it. You turn into that reactive state. So I'm, con I'm being, so I'm constantly aware, but this has taken me a long time to be aware of. Um, do you have anything quite like that? I don't do the meditation like you just explained there, but my philosophy is about having high daily standards. So okay. Um, I know we've talked about goals in the past and, you know, goals is a word that can often be construed quite negatively, I've, I find, certainly from my own experience. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of goal setters, oh, you've got this big scary goal out here, that's where it needs to be, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And, you know, I worked in an organisation in years gone by where, you know, you went along the way trying to get to that big scary goal. But all that happened at the end of each year was that goal reminded you of all the stuff or reminded me of all the stuff. I hadn't done and actually yeah. that was negative that was destructive so what I was able to do yeah. was to flip that thinking so yes that's where I want to be that's what the end looks like and we all need to know that whether it's financial planning or building a business you need to know what the end looks like it's a Stephen Covey principle isn't it begin with the end in mind but then working back yeah. from that the only things that we can control are the things that we can control so day in day out what are the things that we have control over it's our attitudes our behaviors mm -hmm. and our standards so for me i just have high challenging standards if i can control those day in day out do you know what everything else just takes care of itself and the next thing that i do is surround myself with good people because we can we, we i can't even speak excuse me breaking my teeth in for an idiot here <laughs> <laughs> we become the 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 dynamic of the top five or six people that we spend the most time with surround yourself with good people is what I say to people, you know, don't hang out with the mood hoovers. Mm -hmm. They're only going to get you one place. And it's not where you, where you want to be. Well, not unless you want to be a mood hoover. <laughs> yeah. And you talk positive energy is basically what you mean. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Again, it comes down to those commonalities. You want to be with people who are just like you. Yeah. You want to do business with people who are just like you. And that's what I, in the consultancy as well, in terms of sales, take yourself seriously, take your product seriously. It comes with the why. So the reason you do why, why do I do what I do? So you can answer what you do for them as well. And so they know what you do for them. So that's why the message clicks. Um, so I teach, again, it comes a lot of it from Jordan Belfort. He talks about the enthusiastic as hell, sharp as attack and an expert in your field. Yeah. It comes out and we judge in the first, first four seconds of a call, we judge. If you aren't those things, people want to do business with the experts. It's if interesting, you... actually. Last week I was on a conference, a virtual conference, and it was for what we call life-centered planners. So in other words, proper financial planners who focus on life first and finance second. And there was um, uh, a clinical psychologist in America there. Both he and his dad are psychologists, um, as well as being certified financial planners. And they were really just saying that if you roll back the clock 30, 40 years ago, you know, people's time... Uh, attention span was I don't know kind of this yeah it was that kind of sort of level there people's time attention span nowadays is this and it's because of these devices we get so many notifications uh, was, yeah, pushed through yeah. and actually therefore you've got something like four seconds to you know gain someone's like impact and like you think exactly what kind of world are we living in that, that that's that's the kind of base level that we're operating to 
And it doesn't happen overnight. That's the conviction. That's what I'm talking about. That's where it comes from the why. Why do I do what I do? It's all these things. It's then the, the mindset thing. It's being top of your game. It's the words that you use, the way you say them. It's a power. It's the conviction that I am here to solve your challenge. But at the same time, as I was trying to say earlier, is take yourself seriously as well, because not everyone's going to be your customer. They want to deal with the expert, but the expert's busy. Okay. Yeah. If you're going to spend an hour talking about the weather, you're not, experts don't do that. So customers want to deal with experts and it's taking yourself seriously. Talk a little bit, build that rapport, but pull them back, put them back on the straight line, keep them from point A to B in the sales process without going up here and up down there. Um, so would you see what I mean? So it's that conviction that you're an expert, you're here to solve a problem, but not everyone's going to be a customer. You haven't got to do business with everyone anymore. If that makes sense. You could, then that's when we come back to the Raven fans. Yeah, I think that's brilliant. Raven fans are another word that people buzz around now is tribe. You know, who's your tribe? You know, are you, you know, are you, are you getting the right people surrounded around you? Are the sort of people, you know, uh, attracted to you? So yeah. in terms of anybody sort of wanting to reach out and talk to you about consultancy, Rob, yeah. what's the best way of them connecting with you? Yeah, best way on my website, commissionrepression.com. Um, I'm obviously on LinkedIn as well. Send me a message and let's just find out if we, if I can't help you, we'll come to that natural conclusion. There's, there's no obligation. I just want to find out, have those conversations. If I really can, let's talk. But if not, it's fine. It's perfectly fine. You, you might just need to tweak something a little bit and I can tell you that. But if it's worth a sales, couple of sales days with me, just to increase that top and bottom line and get more sales across the line, is that a cost or investment? Yeah. That's kind of what my message is. It's, it's I'm going to guarantee, not guarantee, but I'm going to make sure we're going to get a return and get more sales across the line. Is there anything that you think that we, we, we've not covered today that we should be covering? I think we've got the meaning, my opinion of sales. And I think we've got a very light minded about that solving problems, challenges. <clears throat> I like to say the word challenges now, because what does problems actually mean? Because yeah. challenges we can overcome. Yeah. So solving challenges through sales, um, the ethics of the why and the sales story and the foundation. And my message is confidence and clarity. So I think we've pretty much covered everything, unless you've got any more. It's, it's really nice to be asked questions. That's why I said earlier. Because <laughs> that's all I do is ask questions all the time long, and you know it, it can get a bit. So it's nice to talk a bit more. Because, I again, like you said, two ears, one mouth. The 80-20 rule, 80% them, 20% you. Yeah. And it, and it doesn't happen overnight. Yeah, it, it's quite, I, I know how you mean that, because it quite feels quite artificial sometimes to be kind of talking at the camera like this when, when I'm with a client. You know, I'll say, you know, what's important about money to you? And, you know, you Get know all the money in the world, what would you do? You know, all this kind of stuff. And I'm all ears. I'm trying to capture every little word that they say, their tonality. Um, and it's just really sort of finding that that, that kind of area, really. So, um, yeah, that'd be really, it, really good. Yeah, it's, it's, it's taking them down that straight path of the sale and not jumping from question to question. Listen to what they say. Base your questions around what they say. So if they've said something, they've opened up to you. Yeah. Acknowledge it. Use some of the words they've used and build a question around it. Some people just are clearly following the scripts and just asking question after question, not listening. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. Well, I've got a little offer that I'm going to give to people today. You mentioned something about giving something away for free. Well, it's not quite free, but uh, I've, I've got a limited. So the book here, I've got a limited supply of these books, Dream It, Planet, Live It, which is uh, number one bestseller. If you go to dreamitplanetliveitbook.com, slash offer you can get a copy of the book for just literally a pound i don't know how much longer i'm going to keep that offer up but it's just something i've put up there during these times uh, to try and help people and inspire them um, as you can see it's not the thickest book in the world but i promise you that anyone who works through the actual um, exercise in that it will help you get some clarity about who you are you know what you want to do where you want to be and that's part of my kind of giving back in terms of helping people you know, support one another and I guess you know you're offering in terms of you know having that kind of discovery call with you to see whether you yep. can help and support people it's all Absolutely. part and parcel of that isn't it but on and um, I think it goes down to your attention span thing I mean communication has people are scared to get on the old traditional way of just speaking to someone over the phone yeah. having a proper conversation instead of it's a text it's an email yeah it's it's a it's a, it's again it's a, someone else's agenda have a good old-fashioned conversation that's what i do and if we're not fit for each other it's perfectly fine it's perfectly fine rather than having one of those long drawn up maybes you never hear from them again yeah just tell me it's perfectly fine that's closure it's done <laughs> um and that's what i teach as well rob it's been brilliant having you on the call yeah it's been a great it's been really good spending the time with us um i really do recommend anybody who's watching this who needs some kind of help 
uh, with their sales processes. You know, don't 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 be sort of shy. You know, reach out to Rob. So LinkedIn, Rob Austin uh, is the guy to get, connect with there. And the website is Commission with Permission. Is that right? Com. Yeah. Commission with permission, reach out to it's Rob. It's a mouthful sometimes. <laughs> it is, yeah. I, I tried everything, cwp.com, everything, but it was all taken. So, <laughs> Brilliant. Um, I, so. I can thoroughly recommend Rob. He, he, he's really top of his game uh, in, in his past life, obviously working in you know the hotel trade. He's, he's had to deal with every range of person, right? You know, yeah, from, that's pretty much people it. People yeah. right at the bottom of the tree in terms of the, you know, in the, in the hospitality business to all the kind of sort of, you know. Every nationality as well. <laughs> every nationality. The, every nationality as well. Yeah. Well, thanks for spending the time, Rob. Great to see you today. Thanks very much. And uh, we'll see you soon. Take good care. Stay safe. Thanks, Carl. See See you soon. Bye.